This is a story many people think they know. You might have seen a poster like this, this, or that. Maybe a public safety announcement. Stories warning about the misuse of antibiotics and the deadly infections that will escape our control if these drugs stop working. It's called antimicrobial resistance, and each year it's associated with millions of deaths. But everyone is missing a key part of the story just how bad things really are. Patients and infections are missing from the global picture. Communities, cities, countries, entire populations who need help most, simply not recorded. This is how the world lost track of antimicrobial resistance. It's extremely difficult, often impossible, to treat someone with a drug-resistant infection. So antimicrobial resistance, or AMR, is the situation where a microorganism cannot be effectively treated by a particular drug. This is Professor Paul Turner, director of the Cambodia Oxford Medical Research Unit. There are now factors that are well known to drive these bugs to evolve. So if we overuse the drugs or if you misuse the drugs, also where we have poor infection control practices. And that's Dr. Andrew Kambugu. He heads up the Infectious Diseases Institute in Uganda. So, drug-resistant infections can be bacterial, like E. coli and Streptococcus, but also viral, parasitic, or fungal. There's a drug-resistant Klebsiella spreading across Europe, the multi-drug-resistant tuberculosis throughout Southeast Asia and Africa. Anyone anywhere is at risk from these superbugs. In fact, let's revisit this graph from Elia. It comes from the latest Global Research on Antimicrobial Resistance paper, GRAM for short. Right now, it's the most comprehensive analysis of the current burden. It estimates that 1.14 million people die directly because of drug-resistant infections in 2021. And the majority of these deaths were in the world's poorest countries. In Uganda, there are some alarming developments related to AMR. We have some data around AMR in urinary tract infections, on bloodstream infections, especially in uh, what are called high dependency units and intensive care units. We have to even work harder in this part of the world. No doubt at all, this is a global public health issue. But like Andrew points out, the burden is not affecting everyone equally. And it's probably worse than we think. I think that the first thing to say is we don't fully understand the global burden of AMR, despite what you may read. We've had several estimates based on extrapolation of data, but really those are just educated guesses and no more than that. Unless we gather more data and standardize surveillance, it's tricky to know exactly what to do about antimicrobial resistance. We can't track everyone who's affected or what impact it's having on healthcare systems. Doctors can't monitor treatments and governments struggle to set targets, figure out where to focus funding or roll out necessary interventions. So how can we fill in these huge data gaps? Well, we've got to start small. You know, at an individual patient level, I'm sad to say that diagnostic microbiology isn't always that useful. However, if you put data together and aggregate it, then an individual institution, a network of institutions can then begin to understand the important organisms causing infections in, in their geographical or patient setting. They can understand the, the antibiotic resistance profiles better and use both of those data to inform empiric treatment guidelines. Once we properly monitor the issue at the local scale, we can start to reveal the bigger picture the regional, national, and global burden of antimicrobial resistance will become much clearer. But AMR surveillance isn't that straightforward. So I, mean, I think the, the key thing here is that diagnostic microbiology is expensive, it's slow, and it's tricky to do at high quality and at scale. And, and many clinicians in, in settings where laboratory services are not of high quality, they will deprioritize requesting those tests even when they are affordable because the results are deemed not to be trustworthy. In Africa, a recent study found that across these countries, less than 1% of the laboratory network was able to identify drug-resistant microbes. And data is often written by hand, making it difficult to combine and analyze digitally. If we want to tackle this global problem, we need to be able to collect and combine evidence from everywhere. Collaboration is critical. 
Over in Uganda, Andrew currently leads one of the hubs for Camonets. And in Cambodia, Paul is part of ACORN, two very different global networks formed of several countries, but all working together to tackle antimicrobial resistance. Each hub is contributing data. I think for me, this is where the uh, magic of, of this network is. I, I really view it as a cycle where we look at the data, we get insights from it, we apply uh, any insights back into the community, collect more data. You know, trying to work with hospitals to build on existing capacity. We have more than 40,000 patients in the network and two thirds of those have got optimal testing. Now that's far above what one might have predicted. It's a relief, but it's a sign that we probably were on the right track. Projects like these help leaders, policymakers, doctors, and researchers all make sense of what's going on. And while teams work on filling the data gaps, modeling reports like RAM are really important to help everyone better understand the global picture. Although saying that, there'll never be one single solution. Yes, some countries are worried about overusing antimicrobials, but many don't even have access to enough of them in the first place. I want to use this as an opportunity to advocate, especially to colleagues in the global north or high-income countries, that we need to continue investing in the production of new antibiotics. An AMR threat in Uganda is an AMR threat anywhere. There's a lot to do. Over the next 25 years or so, the world could witness 39 million deaths directly attributable to antibiotic resistance. We have to find a way to keep track of drug-resistant infections. The best tool to tackle this health crisis is to properly understand it. Decision makers need more data, turning facts into action. But the countdown has already started. These treatments are there to help save your life. Until one day, they just can't.